Hi, my name is Luis Fernandez and I'm a certified Stratasys field engineer for Go Engineer. In this video, we'll be showing you how to visually reduce stair stepping on round surfaces in the Z-axis using the Insight software. This means that we will be improving the aesthetics of the part. Now before we start, let me explain a scenario when you might want to use this method. For the most part, it's most logical to print a cylinder surface standing upright for the best surface finish, but sometimes you may be forced to print it laying down flat for strength purposes. For example, this file is a very basic example of a cavity in a mold. If we print it upright this way, let me go ahead and change the orientation, we will get a nicer surface finish, however the mold might not withstand the pressure and can break at this point because of the layer to layer bond in the Z axis. So basically around this area, you might not have a very good bond and this can pretty much snap right off if we're putting enough pressure. Another reason to use this method is if you are planning on sanding, tumbling, or vapor smoothing the part. It will be quite a bit easier to sand and you will get better results if you tumble or vapor smooth the part. Alright, let's go ahead and go back to our previous orientation. I'm going to go ahead and go into an isometric view. And I'm going to go ahead and spin the part flat. And let's go ahead and go to a top view. So if we build it flat this way, the contours will be a continuous road all the way around the part. This will get us more strength and the mold is less likely to break. Alright, so now let's go check out the parameters of the modeler. So right now we have a Fortis 400 selected, building at 10,000 resolution, ABS M30, SR30 support. So that's just fine, we're going to go ahead and leave that that way, and let's go ahead and slice this part. Alright, so here's our slice part, and let's also run our tool paths. Now let's go ahead and step through the layers to see what we have. I'm going to step up to the layer where the brown surface starts and show you a two layer display so you can see the step from one layer to the next. So it looks like it starts at layer 27 so I'm going to go ahead and step up one more layer and let's go over to a top view and I'm going to use this display which is basically going to show us our current layer and our layer below. So if I click that you can easily see the stepping here. Alright, so to see exactly what the machine is going to do, I'm going to go ahead and right click and hit Shape Toolpaths. So now we can actually see a visual of what the machine is going to lay down. The rastering is pretty noticeable from one layer to the next. If we keep stepping up, you will see that the overlap keeps happening for a few more layers. Then eventually you just see lines overlapping rather than the full raster. To visually reduce the larger steps, what we can do is convert these overlapping rasters to overlapping contours, meaning that all you will see are overlapping lines similar to the layers up here. So basically what we're going to do is those larger steps down at the bottom, we're going to convert them so it looks something like this. So it's going to be a, a little more pleasing to look at. The steps are still going to be there, but it's definitely going to look a lot better. So if we keep stepping down, we see that that raster kind of starts overlapping, and that's a layer to layer step right there. Alright, so now at this point we're ready to create our custom group. Let's go over to Toolpaths, hit Custom Groups, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to tell the machine to create more rasters here so it overlaps with just a whole bunch of lines rather than having that raster. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and click New here. And once you click new, you're going to get this new window that's going to pop up. And I'm just going to rename the group name to five contours because I believe five contours is going to be enough to, uh, to create that overlap. So display color is fine to leave at magenta. Right now, the only color that's being used is red. So anything other than red is fine. Uh, toolpad material model is, is fine. That's what we want to print this out of. Uh, contour style, this is where we want to change it. So we have it at single contour only right now switch this over to multiple contours. Contour width can stay at 20 thou standard, that's totally fine. And number of contours is where we're going to change it to five contours. Now one more thing that we want to do is we want to apply contour style to selected feature only. And the reason why we want to do that is because we just want to apply this uh, custom group to the inside rectangle and not to the outside as well. So let me go ahead and click on that. And once I click on that then we can go ahead and hit this green checkbox. Alright, so now we have that five contours group name up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add this bottom layer here just to kind of show you the difference. So let me go ahead and unshade these toolpaths. And let's go ahead and add this bottom layer to this custom group. 
So now you can see that the bottom one turned magenta, so that's part of the custom group. The red one is still on the standard. So let's go ahead and step down one layer and process this group. Now let's go ahead and step up one more time and let's go ahead and view the layer below. Let's go ahead and shade toolpaths and now we can see that that overlap looks a lot better than that first uh, first original raster overlapping that we had. So now at this point we're basically going to have to add this custom group to a few more layers so we can see that all of these are still you know overlapping rasters. So to do this as quickly as possible what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a range so let me go down to pretty much this layer and that's layer 28 is going to be the bottom of my range and then I'm going to step up and let's go ahead and view the two layer view here so we're going to step up until we pretty much get rid of these little rasters here so it looks like layer 59 is a good uh, end point so we'll make that the top of my range let's go ahead and view my range so now I'm viewing pretty much all of these layers and I'm going to go ahead and add all of these. Now as you can see, we're basically just grabbing the internal rectangle portion of the part. Let's go ahead and hit add. Let's view all our layers. So now you can see which ones are part of the custom group. So now at this point, let's go ahead and process all of our layers. And we could either hit this one here or we can hit this button here and this is going to process our group. I'm just going to go ahead and process everything. I'm going to run our toolpaths there. And let me go back down to layer 28 or 27 where it started. And let's do that multiple layer view. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and step up. We're at layer 28, 29. Now you can see that these overlaps are a lot friendlier to the eye rather than that original raster overlapping. All right, so now at this point, we can go ahead and generate our supports. So once we hit generate supports, we're going to get this warning saying that uh, if we do generate supports, it will delete existing toolpaths. It's totally fine, so I'm going to go ahead and click yes. Now I'm going to go ahead and regenerate my toolpaths. And as you can see, those are still part of their custom group, so nothing changed there. All right, so now at this point, go ahead and send it over to the machine. So we can go ahead and hit this uh, build button here, send it over control center. And that's pretty much it. All right, so here's a picture of the uh, original file that we printed. So you can definitely see the uh, stair stepping layer to layer. And here is the revised version. Basically, after, uh, after all of what we did, we printed it. So you can definitely see that this image looks a lot smoother than this one here. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope this video helps. And again, this is Luis with Go Engineer. Thanks for watching.